Hello and welcome. On behalf of the National Eczema Association, I'd like to welcome you to our Webinar Wednesday presentation, Get the Facts, Traditional Chinese Medicine and Eczema by Dr. Olivia Sue Friedman. I'm Isabel Thibault, Senior Manager of Community Research, and I manage NIA Survey Research, which generally aims to gather information from many individuals about the eczema patient experience so we can better understand how to improve the health and quality of life of individuals living with eczema. We'd like to thank our 2020 Webinar Wednesday sponsor, Sanofi Genzyme and Regeneron, whose unrestricted educational grant has made today's presentation possible. Our presenter today is Dr. Olivia Sue Friedman. Dr. Friedman is a doctor of acupuncture and Chinese medicine. She is the chair of the board of directors of American Society of Acupuncturists and founder of Amethyst Holistic Skin Solutions in Chicago, Illinois. Dr. Friedman specializes in treating both chronic and acute skin conditions, including eczema. And with that, I'm pleased to introduce our presenter, Dr. Olivia Sue Friedman. So before we get started, I just thought I would tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I actually was an eczema warrior once too. Um, I had eczema, I had asthma, allergies, hives, I even had anaphylaxis. And my doctors kept me armed with a combination of antihistamines, bronchodilators, steroids, ointments, and lotions. And I was told that I was never really going to be able to cure it, but I would have to just manage it. Um, so I was in and out of doctor's offices a lot. I oftentimes actually was in the hospital as well, um, trying to manage it all. And my gut also deteriorated and I couldn't handle a lot of different foods. Um, at one point, my allergist, my pulmonologist, my GP, and my dermatologist put me on seven different drugs. And um, it was not getting better. So at that point in time, I actually really opened up to the idea of going to an alternative medicine practitioner. And so I went to a traditional Chinese herbalist and he took one look at my skin and he said he could take care of it. So sure enough, after four to six months of herbal medicine treatments, my skin cleared up and the hives stopped appearing. My asthma and my allergies went away, except for my peanut allergy, I still have that. And my gut was able to handle a lot of the foods that I never thought I was gonna be able to eat again. So when you live through those kinds of extremes, it's really hard not to be changed by the experience. And as a result, um, I thought to myself, if someone could do this for me, uh, wouldn't it be cool to spend the rest of my life doing this for others? So I actually quit my job in corporate America. I went back to school and I became a traditional Chinese medicine dermatologist. And now I practice and I help whoever I can. So what does TCM know about eczema? So here's some really interesting facts. Um, 3,000 years ago, obviously before there was any paper or pencil, uh, we have evidence that there are animal bones that they found that actually have skin conditions carved into them. So that was the way that they kept records back then. Uh, between 300 BCE and 200 CE, um, the Chinese had produced over 200 dermatology texts. And by 1644 to 1911, there were over 340 skin diseases that were identified. And one of which would be interesting to you, um, it was called Wind of the Four Crooks. And as you would imagine, it's because it's the inner areas of the elbows and the inner areas of the knees. And that's what they're referring to, eczema. So to date, there's actually 1,500 texts on herbal medicine. So I would say they have a very long history of studying um, dermatology, and so they know quite a bit. So a lot of people ask me, what is the biggest difference between TCM and Western medicine? And let me start from the top. Uh, one of the biggest differences is that we kind of look at the root cause instead of just symptoms. In Western medicine, we, we, do, we try to manage um, eczema symptoms like itch and inflammation and infection and dryness. Um, we identify a specific biochemical mechanism that produces that symptom, and then we try to develop a drug that essentially can shut down that biochemical mechanism. So many drugs do a really great job of managing those symptoms, but a lot of those drugs really don't address what's underlying and what is the reason why this mechanism went awry in the first place. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, this is why most patients typically have to stay on drugs in order to manage their symptoms. 
So in contrast, um, Chinese medicine actually focuses on the root, root cause. Uh, we say that if you treat the root cause, then shouldn't all the symptoms go away? So that brings me to the second difference between TCM and Western medicine. Um, we have a really detailed diagnosis system. Uh, what happens in Western medicine is we typically treat each case very similarly. Um, a lot of the <clears throat> excuse me, um, drugs and products that we prescribe are used regardless of what kind of condition you have or presentation. Um, you know, most people use like anti-inflammatories, aminosuppressants, antibiotics, moisturizers, and then for really serious situations, we use biologics. Um, in Chinese medicine, we have 11 different classifications for why itch occurs, and we have eight patterns to identify the source of the redness. We say that lichenification actually indicates one of three different issues. And if you have weeping, oozing skin, it can be sourced to three different causes. So the distinctions go on. Um, as a result, the Chinese medical diagnosis system is much more de detailed, and that lends itself to a much more customized approach to treatment, which brings me to the third reason, or the third thing that makes us different. Uh, different presentations typically get different treatments. So in Chinese herbal medicine, there's over a thousand different ingre ingredients that can be used. Um, individually, they each offer a set of healing properties. And when they're cooked together, they actually bind and form other biochemicals that provide other capabilities. Um, by identifying the specific features of each patient's eczema, Chinese medicine dermatologists can select the herbal ingredients that best address each issue. And then they can combine them to form a customized formula. And additionally, as eczema evolves and or it heals, we can use different formulas, we can use different ingredients, we can use different dosages of each ingredient, and we can change that throughout the entire treatment process. So another thing that's a little bit different is that location, location, location is really important to us. Um, in Western medicine, we tend to treat uh, using the same things regardless of wherever those lesions exist. But in Chinese medicine, eczema is treated really differently if it appears on the hands versus the feet or the neck versus the legs. Um, infant eczema is treated differently than childhood and adult eczema. And that's because the presentation locations tend to be really different. So for example, like infant eczema tends to center around the cheeks and the scalp. Um, usually it's the outer areas of the limbs but it really spares the diaper region. And then childhood eczema starts to take over. It starts to move to the inner parts of the limbs. It goes to the eyes, it goes to the mouth, it goes to the neck, and sometimes it hits the torso. And then adult eczema can appear in the genital regions and everywhere else that we have not already listed. Um, and they can also cluster in very specific body parts. So in Chinese medicine, we have herbs that actually treat specific locations of the body. Um, we also have ways that we can prepare the herbs that actually alter the direction that the herbs move, either up or down. And then lastly, um, there are herbs that actually usher all the other herbs to those specific parts of the body. And so as such, um, Chinese medicine dermatologists can really match the herbs to any particular eczema location. And the last thing that's really different is we really look at the body as a whole. We look at body, mind, and spirit. Um, Chinese medicine looks at the entire body as being a very intraconnected set of systems that influence each other um, and work together. Um, an issue like eczema is not really looked at as just a distressed skin barrier, but rather a distressed system that can also cause distress to many other systems as well. So as a result, um, Chinese medicine believes that lasting change occurs when we treat the entire body, not just one system or part. And because of this perspective, it's not unusual for a Chinese medicine dermatologist to spend an hour um, talking to their new patients about every aspect of their life, their health, and that's all to really understand all the contributing factors that are playing into a person's eczema. Um, those prescribed herbal formulas um, help to the whole entire body heal. And as a result, um, it's not unusual for people to see what they think are seemingly disassociated health issues improve as they're being treated for the skin. So the way we see it is, it's all related. 
So another question that people always ask me is, why are you using herbal medicine and why aren't you using acupuncture? Because you're actually licensed in both, right? So one of the reasons is that um, it's very difficult to get acupuncture treatment every single day. Uh, most people can't do that. But with herbal medicine, you can do that. You can take it every single day. Uh, the other thing is it's incredibly customizable. While in acupuncture, you can use different points and you can change them. Uh, in herbal medicine, we can actually change out ingredients. We can change out the actual amounts that we use each of the ingredients. We can actually change out the ratios that we use them in the formulas. Uh, we can also think about, you know, what kind of pattern a person has and fit it to that. We can talk about location. We can think about, you know, what is the person's basic constitution that actually feeds into the type of eczema they have. And we can look at all the different contributing factors. Uh, we can also think about sensitivities. Um, you know, as we mentioned before, like some people can be allergic to things and some people might just be a little more sensitive in general. So we can think about those things. And we can also change things as the condition evolves. Um, another thing that is really helpful is that um, oftentimes with acupuncture, you know, you're sticking needles into the skin, right? And with somebody who has eczema all over the body, it's really difficult to find a place where a needle might not aggravate that particular area. So the great thing about herbal medicine is that you can just protect all those affected areas and you're just taking everything internally and you're treating it that way. Um, and lastly, with herbal medicine, we can actually treat internally as well as externally. So there's a lot of different pluses that um, herbal medicine actually allows. So the next question that most people ask me are, well, how are herbal medicines actually made? And um, there's a lot of different forms, but the one that I really um, like the most and feel that is the most effective is vacuum packed liquid herbal formulas. And um, these are made from a very specially built pressurized processing machine. And this machine, um, and process was actually invented about 50 years ago in South Korea um, when they had studies that showed that the maximum extraction of a medicinal property uh, from an herb actually happens more quickly and more effectively when the herbs are actually boiled in water under pressure. So since then, the herbal pressure cooker was perfected to meet the various temperature needs of different herbal ingredients. And because it was built to maintain a very sterile environment throughout the process, it's allowed, it allows for the purest extractions possible. So not surprisingly, um, this form of herbal medicine is the best choice for TCM dermatology. So when you're actually making a formula, um, an herbalist is gonna prescribe a custom formula for each patient and submit this to the herbal medicine uh, pharmacy. The pharmacy then puts all the requested individual herbs into um, the machine and um, all the different dosages with filtered water. It takes a formula about two and a half hours to process from raw ingredients to cooked. And when it's complete, the liquid is dispensed into individual vacuum packed sachets. And these kind of look like a soy sauce packet, um, like at a Chinese restaurant, um, but they're a little bit bigger. And um, here's basically an idea of what they look like. So that you can see they're a little bit bigger than a cell phone, as I meant, or about the same size of a cell phone. And this is basically one dosage. So um, the packets um, that we use are made of PVA and PSA free food grade plastic. And the internal layer is made of a biodegradable plant material. So the packets contain one dosage, as I mentioned, and a typical treatment requires about two packets per day. Uh, because the herbal formula never comes in contact with the air, it's really quite shelf stable. Um, if you leave it in a cool place without direct sunlight, vacuum packs can last for about 30 days. And if you put it in the refrigerator, it'll last 60 days. But most patients use, I usually send about two weeks of um, formula to people, and so they usually use it up before the expiration date. So you don't usually have to worry about that. Um, another form is that from liquid herbs is herbal topicals. And these are essentially liquid herbs that um, are either used as a wash or they can actually come in a prepackaged form as an ointment or a cream. So the types of topicals, or these types of topicals are essentially um, concentrated herbal formulas or individually cooked ingredients that are mixed with an all natural oil or emollient. And then that makes it really easy to apply onto the skin. 
um, by using a combination of liquid ingested formulas as well as topically applied herbal formulas, we can usually treat the skin pretty well um, from the inside and out. Um, there are other forms of formulas and you may have seen them when you work with other practitioners and those include things like herbal pills, um, capsulated formulas and herbal granule powders. Um, I prefer not to use these and these are the two reasons. Um, one is they tend not to be as potent and two, they are not as pure as vacuum packed herbs. And let me tell you why. So every time you process an herb, you're basically losing some of its potency and it basically degrades the herbs to some degree. Um, so for example, when you make a granule, you actually have to dehydrate it from a liquid. And then when you make a pill, you actually have to take that granule and put it through another process so that it packs into a pill. So additionally, all of these types of herbs actually add something called a hygroscopic incipient. And these ingredients are meant to keep the pills and the granules dry. And because these ingredients basically pull out moisture from the skin, they're not always really ideal for skin conditions, as you would imagine. Um, since vacuum packed decoctions use no preservative, preservatives, no binders, and therefore they're just pure and filtered water, I really prefer them because I, I just feel like that's what you want. So another question I always get is, are herbal, is herbal medicine safe? And the short answer I would say is yes, um, but it really depends on your practitioner. They have to do their homework. Um, just to tell you a little bit about me, um, before I opened up my practice, I spent weeks uh, researching herbal companies to examine how they source their herbs, what they measure to ensure quality, uh, what they tested to ensure safety, and whether or not their herb facility was checked by a third party to ensure quality control and cleanliness. Um, it was really important to me to work with a company that provides authentic, premium, and safe herbs. So here are the things that I looked for in an herbal pharmacy and are really important to have. So first, um, herbal quality. You wanna make sure that the raw herbs are checked and they're verified for their correct species and geo-authenticity. Um, upon receipt, every herb must pass an inspection for proper identification, maturity, and high quality. Um, every batch is essentially tested for heavy metals, pesticides, residues, and microbial contamination. And additionally, every batch has to adhere to specific techniques to preserve and package the herbs in order to ensure the product is free from sulfur dioxide fumigation and other preservatives. Another thing is herbal testing. It's really important that herbs are manufacturer tested using this thin layer chromatography or high um, performance liquid chromatography to confirm identification ensure potency and to test for active constituents. Um, the pharmacy should also be using an independent testing facility to test their herbs for microbes, heavy metals, such as like arsenic, lead, mercury, cadmium, cadmium um, as well as 60 other pesticides um, that can include like DTT and DHC. Um, the other thing that I think is really important is that they're FDA approved. Um, if they're registered with the FDA, that means that they have to undergo regular inspections by the FDA and they're whatever the FDA wants, so it can be any time. Um, that's really good to confirm good manufacturing processes and it really makes me feel good that, you know, at any given time, they're doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing. I also, th also think it's really important to have credentialed experts uh, manning the whole process. Um, they should have people with the highest level of certification in herbal medicine, which right now is the NCCOM certificate, um, which I also have. Um, the pharmacy I use also has the added benefit of having a certified Western pharmacist who's overseeing all the processes of every single order. And together between all these different people, um, all these experts are basically looking at how the vacuum, vacuum packed formula is being produced and making sure it goes through a six point safety check. So as you can see, it's really important that the pharmacy that your practitioner works with has really high standards. And the only way to ensure that is to make sure that the herbs that you are getting are high quality, authentic, and safe. So another question that people typically ask me is, what do herbal medicines taste like? And I'm not going to lie, they don't taste like candy. 
Um, a lot of people have told me that their particular prescription tasted like coffee. Some of them told me it was kind of earthy, maybe herbaceous. Um, some people have told me it tasted like dirt. Um, some people told me that uh, they thought it was bad at first, but they kind of got uh, used to it. And then some people have told me that it's outright the worst thing they've ever had and there was no way they could continue. So those people obviously were not good candidates for herbal medicine. So basically, um, every single formula is customized to your pattern of symptoms and everyone's palate is really different. So it's really hard to say exactly how your herbal formula is going to taste to you and then they're gonna change like from week to week. Um, but if you know, uh, how each flavor is actually helping you, you might actually learn to appreciate it. So let me just go over some of the tastes and, and what they actually do. So if you have a, um, a formula that's bitter, um, that's gonna probably help to cool you. Um, they tend to move things in a descending direction and they typically dry fluid or drain dampness and induce bowel movements. Um, an everyday example of something that's really bitter that you would understand is coffee, right? It tends to dehydrate your system. It causes you to urinate or defecate. And because it's moving everything down, it's bringing out the dampness in your system. So if your formula tastes bitter, chances are really good that you have some amount of swelling or you have exudate or you have an infection. Now, salty flavors tend to cool and they also tend to descend. Um, but the difference between that and bitter flavors is they also tend to moisten. Um, they often tend to soften lumps, um, they detoxify, and they purge the bowel. So one of the things that comes to mind is like when you do a saltwater cleanse. Um, salty herbs commonly are used in inflammatory skin conditions like eczema, um, where there's a lot of trapped internal heat, which causes all the body fluids to dry up. So it's also used um, to break up hard nodules in cases like acne. Um, another flavor is spicy. Uh, they tend to disperse, they tend to expand, they tend to stimulate circulation in the body, and they usually move energy up and out. Um, typically, these herbs are used to help digestion. Um, they usually induce sweat, um, they vent heat, increase energy, and they kill parasites. Um, a really great everyday example is black pepper. I'm sure um, you know that if you have enough of that ingredient, um, immediately you can feel all this energy coming up to your head and you'll start to have a bead of sweat coming across your forehead. Uh, so spicy herbs are often used in dermatology to help vet heat out and also to get it, um, it it's, which is also a source of itching. So the next flavor is sour. Uh, sour flavors tend to cool, they contract, they astringe, they prevent fluid from actually leaking. Um, this is the reason why when you drink lemonade, it feels so refreshing in the summertime because you're typically hot and sweaty, right? So it kind of brings everything together. Um, sour herbs are often used when there's excess sweating, um, when there's incontinence, when there's diarrhea, or when your skin is really flaccid. Um, it's probably the least used flavor in most con skin conditions, so you probably won't come across that as much. And lastly, um, they're sweet. Well, everybody's favorite. Um, sweet flavors tend to ascend and move outward. They slow and they relax a person's mood and their overall energy. Um, they also help to build liquids or fluids in the body. Um, so it's not a coincidence that people tend to grab sweet foods when they are stressed out. Uh, sweet herbs are often used to re-regulate skin hydration or restore, uh, restore systems that become deficient um, from disease or from being overtaxed. Um, sometimes patients with chronic skin diseases also have respiratory or digestive issues. In these cases, um, sweet herbs can help to rebalance all of these systems. So just to summarize, um, all herbal medicines are made of a combination of herbs and the formulas change to match your needs throughout the process. So it's really gonna be hard to tell um, how exactly your herbal formula is gonna taste at any given point. But if you have a sense of like what the flavor is that's standing out in your dose, now you have a better idea of what that flavor is probably doing for you. All right. Uh, what most, oops, I was gonna say one more thing. 
Uh, what most people do when they actually take their herbal formulas is um, they have to take it twice a day. And the best way to do it is basically just to drink it. Um, I always tell people, you know, just have a really tasty chaser afterwards if it's really bothering you, and then it should go down a lot easier. It's two seconds out of your life, right? Okay, so what's it like to actually see a TCM practitioner? And this is going to really vary um, depending who you see. So I'll just tell you what I do and kind of give you an idea. Um, essentially, I like to meet with people for a complimentary consultation first. Um, I think a lot of people don't know a lot about TCM, and I really like to give them some information so that they feel um, they can make an informed decision about whether or not this is right for them. So during those 30, 30 minutes, they can ask me whatever questions they have, and um, they can meet me, and they can see whether or not I would be a good fit for them. And then if they decide that they want to move forward, then we would actually set up an initial intake, and that's usually for 60 minutes. Um, at that point in time, people would send me photos um, because I do most of my, um, cl my clinic is basically um, online. Um, so people send me photos, they send me um, completed electronic intake forms. And then during the initial intake, we actually go line by line through the intake forms so I can really understand what's going on uh, with your entire health history. Um, after that, I put together an herbal formula. And I typically people use um, or give people a five-day trial first. Um, the reason why it's five days is because that's the minimum size that we can actually make an herbal formula because they actually have to use that machine and it has to have a minimum amount of water in it. Um, and the other reason is so that people don't have to make a big investment at first. They can see whether or not they like the herbs, whether or not they can handle them, if they can take the taste of them. It also gives me a really good idea of like what your body can handle. Um, you know, some people are super um, sensitive and I really have to be careful about um, the dosages that I use or actually sometimes some of the actual ingredients. And so I have to make some adjustments and the trial period actually gives me a sense of like what I should be looking out for for a particular patient. And um, if the trial goes well, then we order a larger dose and then that's when treatment starts. Um, if the trial is uh, okay, then maybe we play around with it a little and we do a few more trials until we get it right. And then after that, we start the treatment. And then you will see me every couple of weeks so that I can see how you're responding. And we can change the formula to match where you're at and where you're going. And then we'll meet every couple of weeks. So then everybody always asks me at this point, so exactly how much is this going to cost me? Um, and again, this is going to vary by practitioner as well. Um, you know, obviously you're going to have the initial intake and the appointments is going to be one cost and then the, um, the herbs are going to be another. Um, you know, those numbers are going to change quite a bit depending on who you go to. So if you're interested in seeing what I charge, you can actually go to my website and you can see. Um, but in terms of the vacuum packs, I can give you a really good solid number for that. Um, I don't charge any additional money for those. I basically have them made for you and then I just charge um, what the cost is to me. Um, and the reason is because practitioners typically get a discount when they work with herbal pharmacy. So I just pass along those savings to my patients. I'm like, why should you pay more for this than, than anybody else? I mean, you should just get it for what it is. Um, so I don't make anything off of these um, herbal formulas. And I also don't ever want to be accused of pushing herbs. Um, so I just want to give people what they need. Um, so the the bare cost of a vacuum pack is essentially like seventy two hundred dollars a week, um, not including shipping costs and taxes. And um, if you use topicals, the uh, brands that I typically use are somewhere between twenty and fifty dollars a container. And you know it depends on how much surface area you're going to be covering. Depends on how quickly you'll be going through those um, containers. So you know if it's only your face that's a problem. It'll probably last you a long time. Um, if you're putting it all over your body, it'll obviously take a lot long, a lot shorter to actually get through them. Um, but typically, one thing I can say is that at this point in time, um, insurance companies don't really recognize herbal medicine as a medicine just yet. Um, so you can't bill directly to an insurance company. However, what I have found is that a lot of companies have HSA programs or FSA programs. And typically, if you call them ahead of time and ask them whether or not this would be covered, a lot of them do cover it. So um, that's a good way to go. Um, but otherwise, if you don't have those options, then it's obviously a cash-based um, uh, treatment, and um, you would basically use a credit card or cash. So 
Another question that people always ask me is, so how long is this going to take? Um, how long is it going to take to heal my eczema? And um, as you would imagine, it's a very hard question to answer with absolutes because it really depends on you. Um, here are the main factors that I can talk to you about that might help to answer that question. Um, first of all, um, what are your contributing factors? So as I mentioned before, um, there are basically seven different major patterns of eczema and most people fall somewhere between all of them. So as a result, it really depends on how complicated your unique pattern is. And typically the longer, the more complicated your situation is, the longer it'll probably resolve. Um, a lot of people will ask, well, I will ask if I see that um, a lot of systems in your body have been affected by your eczema, then that's also going to be another factor that will play into how long things take. Um, the Chinese kind of see skin as a mirror of what's going on in your body or not going on. And this doesn't mean that your organs are broken or they're not performing, but it rather it, it talks about how um, systems can basically be impacted by eczema. And this is one of the reasons why the herbalist is going to ask you a lot of questions like about your sleep, about your digestion, about your bowel movements, about your emotional and psychological state, about your thirst, and about your stress levels, um, and a lot of other things too. And the answer to all of these questions is really going to help better gauge um, how your whole system is operating right now. And so a safe rule of thumb basically is the more systems that are affected, the longer it's likely going to take you to heal. Another thing is sensitivities. Um, a lot of people have trouble with some of the common herbs that are typically used to address a particular um, eczema pattern. And sometimes this is because the patient's overall constitution is fragile or their overall sensitivities have increased as the skin condition has deteriorated. And also some patients are just flat out allergic to certain ingredients. So what I typically do during the initial intake is I identify all the possible allergens. Um, but even after eliminating all of those ingredients, um, there can be a little bit of trial and error about what ingredients and dosages of the ingredients your body can actually handle. Um, the good news is that herbal medicine offers many herbal choices for any specific condition. And so there definitely are substitutes for most things. Um, also, we have a lot of flexibility in terms of the amount that we actually use for each ingredient so we can really match to your individual needs. And the last thing that typically comes into play um, is how consistent are you about taking your herbs? Um, I find that a lot of patients when they go on vacation, they don't take their herbs with them. Um, sometimes when they get sick, they just stop taking the herbs altogether for several days and weeks. And some patients just forget to take their herbs. So it's understandable, life happens. Um, but I think it goes without saying that if uh, it's really difficult to heal and see progress if you're not consistent with your treatment. So let me just wrap this all up for you. Um, basically, the biggest differences between Western medicine and Chinese medicine or traditional Chinese medicine dermatology is we look at everything from the root cause and we try to solve everything in terms of the underlying root cause. Uh, we have an incredibly detailed diagnosis system. We have a very customized medicine. You're going to be meeting with me a lot um, or any practitioner that you see. Um, it's definitely a cash treatment. Um, if you're lucky, you can use an HSA or an FSA. Um, it's definitely a very safe uh, treatment uh, protocol and it's really tasty. So, uh, I just wanted to thank you very much for taking this journey with me, learning all about the facts of eczema. Uh, the picture on the right is actually a real journey that I took. Um, I'm standing on the top of a mountain after a, a five-hour hike, uh, looking out at this beautiful scenery. Um, I know that uh, there's a lot of information that I covered, and I'm sure there's a lot of questions. Uh, what you can do is actually go to my website at amethystacu.com, and you can set up a complimentary consultation. I'll be more than happy to talk to you directly, and I can give you more information about different things. Um, you can also go onto my website, and I have a free course on eczema. Um, it's an e-course, and it's called Solving Eczema from the Inside and Out, and so you can actually click onto that and subscribe to that. 
Um, and I also have a lot of different things about like case studies. Um, I have before and after pictures so you can kind of see how it works. Um, I also have a lot of testimonials of people who have actually gone through this. I have podcasts and videos and all kinds of things. So if you want more information, that's a great resource to go. Um, and otherwise you can set up a complimentary consultation. I'll be more than happy to talk to you and, and give you more of the facts. So I just want to thank you so much for having me. I want to thank the NEA for all the great work that they've been doing. And I just want to thank you for inviting me to share um, with the eczema community. Thanks so much. Thank you again, Dr. Friedman, for helping us get the facts about TCM and eczema. Thank you to Sanofi Genzyme and Regeneron, whose unrestricted educational grant has made today's presentation possible. And many thanks to all of you for joining us today. You can find many additional eczema resources on our website at nationaleczema.org. Once again, I'm Isabel Thibault. On behalf of the National Eczema Association, thank you all for attending our webinar.